this video, I want to talk about Microsoft's fundamentals level certifications. Are they worth it to bother getting? Who are they useful for? What do they deliver? And importantly, what don't they? And what are the other pros and cons? There are lots of reasons to start a journey with Microsoft certification, from wanting to improve your knowledge to the requirements of particular jobs. But if you have no experience of IT related certifications or similar training, getting started may seem really daunting. Microsoft offers a selection of eight certifications at the fundamentals level that designed to be an optional first step on your IT certification journey. Unlike many of Microsoft's certs, they are not prerequisites for any higher level exams, so they are entirely skippable. And for this reason, I've seen many recommend not to bother with them. But I think that while this is valid advice for some, it's really bad advice for others and I'm going to tell you why. But you may be thinking, why am I qualified to be talking to you about this? Well, I've passed all eight of Microsoft's currently available fundamentals level certifications. But in addition to that, I have a good picture of the overall Microsoft certification journey, as I also have four currently active associate level certs and one currently active expert level cert. In addition, I've passed certifications from other tech companies, so I have some perspective as to how Microsoft's program lines up against others. And most importantly, I'm working with this stuff every day as a technology consultant specializing in Microsoft 365 and Power Platform. So with that out the way, let's get started. The fundamentals level certifications are spread right the way across Microsoft's products and services and they focus on a broad perspective, but with very shallow depth. They shouldn't be dismissed as easy, as you need to know a lot of information to pass them, but the information is focused on what Microsoft's products do, rather than how you would go about doing certain things with them. So there isn't a huge amount of hardcore technical knowledge that's needed. Microsoft 365 Fundamentals gives you a solid foundation of the capabilities of the Microsoft 365 platform, including the apps, the associated services, security and compliance offerings, and even licensing. Microsoft Security, Compliance and Identity Fundamentals offers you an overview of security and compliance offerings across the Microsoft Cloud, including Azure and Microsoft 365. It provides you with a grounding in the general concepts of IT security that would be helpful, not just in a Microsoft context, but in association with any cloud-based platform. There are three fundamentals level certifications focusing on Azure. Azure Fundamentals provides a general picture of what cloud computing is, why you might want to use services in the cloud, and concepts like the shared responsibility model. It also provides a good overview of Azure services. Focusing in, then there's Azure Data Fundamentals, introducing things like relational and non-relational databases, getting data into the cloud to analyze, and associated Azure technologies. Lastly, there's Azure AI Fundamentals, which provides an overview of what artificial intelligence is, and then the associated technologies like Azure Cognitive Services that let you leverage AI tools in the Microsoft Cloud. Power Platform Fundamentals gives you an introduction to Power Apps, Power Automate, Power BI, Power Virtual Agents, and Dataverse, as well as associated technologies like AI Builder. You get a good overview of the platform, as well as a little hands-on time with several of the technologies as part of the learning. Lastly, there's two certs that cover Dynamics 365. CRM Fundamentals covers Dynamics 365 sales and the rest of Dynamics 365 customer engagement apps like marketing. ERP Fundamentals, on the other hand, focuses on the finance and operations side of Dynamics 365, such as finance, commerce, and human resources. There are a variety of both technical and non-technical profiles of candidates who might benefit from studying for and attaining a Fundamentals level certification. In my case, I work as a consultant and my specialist area of focus is Power Platform and Microsoft 365. This is where I devote most of my time and learning and where I hold higher level certifications. But the knowledge I have gained of Microsoft's platform by studying for certifications like the Dynamics 365 Fundamental Certs or the Security Compliance and Identity Cert make me a better at supporting customers with the work I do. 
you don't know what you don't know. And there's a lot not to know about cloud technologies generally and Microsoft's platform specifically. Each of the fundamental certifications fills in the blanks of what you might not know and at the very least helps you to understand what you might need to learn or what sort of skills you should be hiring for to deliver that product or complete that project or adopt that new technology. If you're finding this content useful, then please help to grow my audience by hitting the like button, subscribing to the channel, activating the bell, and even consider leaving a comment with your views. If this would be of interest to your network, then I'd appreciate you sharing it there too. IT is not cheap, and nor are the people who work in it. If you're a business owner or a senior leader, then the type of visibility that Microsoft's fundamental certs might give you into tools that you already spend money on, like Microsoft 365 or Dynamics 365, may allow you to leverage additional benefit for your business. Technology should be seen as an increasingly core part of many businesses and the historic desire for many people who are in charge to simply hold it at arm's length as something too complex or too boring to be grappled with just isn't a reality that makes sense anymore. For a fairly modest commitment of time in learning, you can gain visibility that can help you make better decisions in the products you purchase and the services that you choose to spend money on. With the growth of AI and process automation, the pressures on the average office worker to keep up with technology are growing nearly as fast as the opportunities. Getting by in Excel just isn't a killer skill in your resume anymore. The fundamental certifications can signal that you are interested in continued learning and also give you visibility into what's possible so you can get the best out of the tools at your disposal, either in your current role or in future roles. For those who already work in IT, the benefits of fundamental certifications can be less clear. If you already have a good grounding in managing Azure-based data sources, then the Azure Data Fundamentals Excerpt probably isn't going to add that much knowledge for you, and probably isn't going to be that impressive to the people you work for either. But for the reasons I outlined for myself, the certifications that are outside of your core expertise can still be valuable if you're looking to diversify your knowledge. The IT world needs focused experts as much as it needs well-diversified generalists, so I'm not suggesting that every experienced Azure administrator should suddenly start doing fundamentals training on Dynamics 365, but for the career journeys some want to be on, this will make a lot of sense, and in many cases far more sense than starting out with a Dynamics 365 functional consultant level course instead. You shouldn't expect that your study for PL900 Power Platform Fundamentals and suddenly be a seasoned low-code app developer. This would be an unreasonable expected outcome considering there are five associate level certs and one expert level cert in the Power Platform family. There is no shortcut to putting the work in, whether that's purely from experience or from studying or probably from a bit of both, but there sure are a lot of people who seem somewhat frustrated by that reality. Each of the fundamentals level certs takes a broad chunk of Microsoft services and gives you just enough depth to understand and describe what they can do. That word describe is important, as you'll see it a lot on the study guides for these programs, as the expectation, broadly speaking, is not that you know how to do something, but that it can be done and what specific products allow you to do it. So you might know that if you want to run a Windows Server 2019 instance in the cloud, you're going to do this by setting up an Azure virtual machine, and that virtual machine will have a virtual disk attached to it, and it will have virtual networking, etc, etc. You're not expected to demonstrate that you know how to do this, but you know enough to describe what it is, and this would give you the tools to know what to look for if you wanted to find out more. The difference in a lot of cases between someone with no knowledge and someone with fundamental certification level knowledge is knowing the terminology and product set well enough to quickly find the relevant information for wanting to do X or Y or Microsoft Learn or through Google. And please don't underestimate just how critically important that is. No matter what level of certification you have, the most important thing you gain is the context and the awareness to find even more information easily when you need it. 
If anyone's interested in studying for a fundamentals level cert, there are only two places I recommend to go. The first is Microsoft Learn, where you should complete the relevant learning path, and the second is Microsoft's Virtual Training Days, where you should do the webinar-based training associated with whatever course it is you want to do. Beyond that, there are also some really great YouTube channels, like John Savile's, that I would highly recommend if you need more resources. There are any number of paid training providers that will happily take your money to train a fundamentals level course. The only situation where I think this makes a lot of sense is if you're booking someone to give you training for a whole team. Otherwise, it's my view that Microsoft gives you everything you need to learn and pass for free. If you do choose to use paid training, then that's entirely up to you. However, absolutely under no circumstances should you use learning services that promote real exam questions or exam dumps or guaranteed pass, pay after the exam. These exam dump services operate in violation of Microsoft's exam policies. And if you use them and you get caught, your certification will be invalidated and you may be banned from taking any future Microsoft certifications. In addition, you're gonna look pretty dumb the first time anyone who actually knows these technologies starts talking to you about them, as the benefit of these programs is the knowledge you gain, not the credential. On Microsoft Learn, each certification is broken down into various learning paths and modules. The estimated duration of these ranges from about five to 10 hours, but it really depends on how quickly you read and do the exercises. I found that setting aside 10 to 20 hours is generally more than enough to complete the learning path, some video training and follow up study for these certs. Head over to Microsoft Learn, check out the certification section and filter for the beginner level certs. Under each one, you will see everything you need to learn. A link to these resources and to the page for the Virtual Training Day webinars are below, and I highly recommend you check them out. I've also included links to a couple of other YouTube channels that have really good quality content that's focused on certification. My first Microsoft certification was Azure Fundamentals, and it was also the first exam I'd taken in about 20 years. So to say that I was stressed about the exam itself would be an understatement. As long as you have a suitable space to do the exam, you can do it from home online. You need a quiet space, clear of any notes or learning materials, where you can be undisturbed for the duration of the exam. You need to ensure you only have one monitor connected. I always do my exams on my laptop in my dining room on the table there for this reason. When you connect for the exam, you'll be asked to take a photo of yourself, of your government issued photo ID, and of your space. This will be checked and either questions will be asked in follow-up or you'll be admitted to the exam. You need to keep your webcam and microphone on throughout the exam and remain in frame looking at your screen. The exam is multiple choice or similar types of questions. There are no case studies on fundamentals level exams. You'll get questions like, a company requires X, what product would you use? You have the ability to flag questions to return to later, and you only gain points, you don't lose them. So even if you don't entirely know an answer, you should make a best guess before submitting your exam. Once you submit your exam, you'll find out the result immediately. And even if you fail, it will provide you with a report on which areas you were stronger at and which ones you were weaker at, so you know where to study more for your next attempt. You can always return to this report later through your profile on Microsoft Learn if you want to. For many exams, there are now free practice questions on Microsoft Learn, which I highly recommend you try out. You can also pay for practice exams through third parties that are highlighted on Microsoft Learn. A few weeks ago, I published this video looking specifically at how you might go about learning Power Platform from scratch, leading up to the PL900 Power Platform Fundamentals exam. There are lots of similar subject specific videos out of YouTube that would be really helpful to whichever journey you decide to start on. Microsoft, for its part, really wants to give you a good on-ramp for its certification journey. The exams are $99 which on one hand is a tiny amount compared to many programs, but on another you could see as a lot for something that just certifies a base level of knowledge. Hopefully this has given you some valuable information to help you decide whether to pursue a fundamentals level certification. Let me know in the comments which one you're doing, or if you think I'm wrong and these aren't worthwhile at all. I'm interested in different opinions on this. Thanks for watching. 
I look forward to seeing you again for the next video. But until then, bye bye.